You can paint freehand on a cloak like this, even if you're new. Hi new, I'm dad. I needed to paint something that encapsulated the deep castaway despair and raw elf eroticism of the Ideneth. That starts with the brushes. A big honkin' watercolor brush and a few smaller brushes with fine points and a wide belly, preferably not synthetic. We're also going to need flow aid and a wet palette for quality of life. After a deep spiritual journey, I decided on painting an octopus. A brooding but intelligent animal and clearly erotic for reasons you don't need explained. One of the most mournfully sexual things aside from maybe the weird funnel ball nets near my house. Oh my god. 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 So an optional step here, I wouldn't actually recommend this airbrush step. The cloak seems a bit drab to me so I airbrushed it with sky blue. You're gonna make mistakes and touching up things on a gradient just makes it all the much harder. With that done, I took my source image and planning out where to jab my octopus flesh. The sigil in the middle would obscure his face too much, so I decided to put the head on the left and have the testicles grappling to the right. It's okay to change up your source image to make things easier. You're not a photocopier. I look at the color of my source image and find what I assume to be the darkest part of the midtones and start sketching things in. The thing with freehand is you really don't need to be that artistic. You need to follow directions and basically just be a photocopier. Now I look at the upper mid-tones on my source image and I see they're crimson red. Great. I mix some crimson with a tiny bit of my original color. I also wanted to show you a screw up. See how when I was applying it, it was pooling on the surface, even leaving little bubbles? There's no point to that. You're not gonna paint it faster. It'll take forever to dry and actually slow you down between coats. Make sure you're wicking your brush off well on a paper towel, make multiple passes, you'll be done faster and it'll look better. With my basic areas blocked in, I refer to my reference image and look to where my shadows are. I see they're just a darker shade of my midtone, so I make a darker glaze and start to apply it. I'm not trying to match my source image exactly, I'm not a photocopier, but I am looking for similar shapes and tones and shadows that I can pull out and apply to my version where it makes sense. When in doubt, I put shadows go down and I put highlights go up. I'm not overcomplicating it. I continually hold the model at arm's length and squint at it. If the shadows don't read right to you, a mammalian who evolved to fear shadows as a survival mechanism and are therefore an expert in them, then adjust as you see fit. Or check your source image and copy that, just like a photocopier. Some of these steps will take multiple passes. Uh, I usually don't recommend certain paints, but Scale 75 paints dry with less chroma than they look going on and are therefore very forgiving. They're pretty much my favorite to work with for this kind of project, if you can get them. If you notice, I'm still on the big honk and watercolor brush. If I was using a smaller brush, not only would it be slower, but I'd be having to make multiple passes over the same area to cover it, which would possibly create a streaky texture that I don't necessarily want. I finally switched over to a smaller brush as I approached the low end of the highlights. This is also the point you can start to switch over from water to flow aid, which will go a long way in keeping your brush from drying out and applying paint smoothly. I'm going fast by going slow taking lots of passes with properly diluted paint, not overly diluted, mind you, that's the other thing you can mess up, but properly diluted. It's a lot faster than going on too thick and destroying your previous coats and trying to fix up little mistakes and panicking and feeling like you ruined the whole thing. I notice I'm missing a lot of darker contrast, so I switch back to my darker shades to reinforce things a bit better. You should jump back and forth so that you can course correct as you go. Finally, I start to add the little suckers. Here's the next point to freehand. Know the limitations you have and decide where to stop. 
I'm painting this for filming, but if I had this right up against my face, I could probably paint tiny little shadow ellipses beneath the suckers that I'm adding. I could even highlight them, but I can't right now, so I'm not. And if I couldn't do it while getting real close to the model, I wouldn't do it either. Y you shouldn't push yourself to wreck the model. It's fine to distinguish between seeking practice and seeking the best final result you can muster. And if you're trying to just make something that looks good, don't push yourself beyond what you can actually apply. I saved the blue highlight until now because of the source image. Some of the tentacle surfaces with suckers are in blue shadow, so I waited until this point to blend the suckers in with the rest of the tentacle. That way they don't look like they're just artificially sitting on top of everything, painted by an alien who didn't evolve to fear the shadows, so he's never understood them, but he'll learn to fear them. You might notice that I didn't paint the crest. Another thing to keep in mind is not to do everything at once. It can be impossible to plan if you paint something a la prima or all at once. The crest and eyes and the little horns sit above everything else, so I focused on the base of the octopus first, then I applied the same mid-tone highlight and shadow process to the new addition. This is the same approach you take painting, say, a person. You'd start with the body first, possibly sketching out the basic eyes, but not actually moving on to the details in full until the body is where you want it. Glazing can be a real pain at this scale. You'll always end up using more than you need. We're at this stage where we really want to do everything we can to be minimal. Small changes will leave big results. If you're uncomfortable making thin lines, make sure you're using Flowaid, make sure you're wicking off, take your time, make some practice strokes on something that isn't too glossy so it doesn't run everywhere. You can do it. This is a great time to clean up your edges with your base color and see it really start to come together. I'm going to show you this cape while I'm here. I wanted to do kind of a green gold that fish people would have, like for their currency that they'd give mostly to their fish landlords for the right to just exist and have shelter. Maybe what's left over can go to the police. I start by blocking in my highlights, imagining a bunch of straight lines being cast across the cloak and filling in the highlights where I'd imagine they'd hit. Just like big slashes of light going across the cloak. Light bounces all over the place, so you can get pretty freaky with this and it'll still look realistic. I mix a deeper blue into my mossy green, but decide to keep the low lights minimal so the contrast of the embroidery isn't more extreme than that of the rest of the cape. I do, however, go nearly white with my extreme highlights, which you always need to do with anything fake metallic, or your brain just kind of doesn't believe it's reflective. That includes highlighting edges. Stuff like this I could spend ages on just blending and blending and blending going back and forth. You'll probably notice that this is the first part of this video where it's actually starting to look pretty good. Keep that in mind when you're painting something and getting frustrated with how it's looking. You're just not there yet, but you'll get there. Now for the scariest part, make a glaze or use a premix shade, mix it with glazing or lamium medium, and air extremely on the side of caution. Blend in the dark recesses of the cape, if you go too hard it'll ruin it. You won't though, I trust you. And there you go, you painted a small part of a little dolly. Send a pic of it to your boss, text them, what do you think about the octopus? Get frustrated when they don't reply, constantly bring it up at work the next day, make it weird. 
You've earned it. <laughs>